visual effects are one of the most important parts of many types of productions, whether it be movies, TV shows, or commercials. Blender is a 3D software that can do professional work, but is it really good when it comes to VFX? To answer this question, we're going to break things down so anyone can understand what we're going to talk about. Number 1. Particle System Blender's particle system is used to simulate large amounts of small moving objects, creating phenomena of high order like fire, dust, clouds, smoke, or for grass and other strand-based objects. Each particle can be a point of light or a mesh. They may react to different influences and forces and have the notion of a lifespan. Hair type particles are a subset of regular particles and hair systems form curves that can represent hair for grass and anything else of that nature. But hair in Blender is not as advanced like we can find in other software or the add-ons that are used in the video game or the VFX industry. Blender's particle system can be used to create high quality visual effects like fire, smoke, dust, blizzards, and so on. As we have it done in the Men in the High Castle show where the VFX was done by Barnstorm VFX Studios that have integrated Blender in their pipeline. Just to be fair, I believe that other than Houdini, most software that are used in the VFX industry use plugins and add-ons in addition to the tools that come with the original 3D package. They use powerful plugins such as PumaFX, Phoenix FD, Krakatoa, Thinkin Particles, and so on. And the best developers don't make their add-ons available for Blender because of its open source nature and the GPL license which makes the source code for their tools available for others to use. But Blender right now has good particle system that can be used for VFX nonetheless. Number 2. Rigid Body Simulation the rigid body simulation can be used to simulate the motion of solid objects. It affects the position and orientation of the objects and does not deform them. Unlike the other simulations in Blender, the rigid body simulation works closer with the animation system. This means that rigid bodies can be used like regular objects and be part of the parent-child relationships, animation constraints, and drivers. Blender rigid body physics is great for flat surfaces or for a single point of contact collisions like a coin falling onto a surface or a cube bouncing. But rigid body physics struggles with curved surfaces in full contact with other curved surfaces. Using rigid body constraints allow you to simplify this by enforcing any relationships between objects without having to rely on the microscopic interactions of these surfaces. This can generally produce a good enough simulation for your needs. Number 3. Soft Body Simulation Soft body simulation is used for simulating soft, deformable objects. It was designed primarily for adding secondary motion to animation, like jiggle for body parts or moving a character. It also works for simulating more general soft objects that bend, deform, and react to forces like gravity and wind, or collide with other objects. The simulation works by combining existing animation on the object with forces acting on it. There are exterior forces like gravity or forces fields and interior forces that hold the vertices together. This way you can simulate the shapes that an object would take on in reality if it had volume or if it was filled with something and was acted on by real forces. Soft bodies can interact with other objects through collision and they can interact with themselves through self-collision. Number 4. Cloth Simulation Cloth simulation is one of the hardest aspects of CG because it is a deceptively simple real-world item that is taken for granted. It actually has very complex internal and environmental interactions. Blunter has cloth simulation that is used to making cloth, flags, banners, and so on. Cloth interacts with and is affected by other moving objects like wind and other forces, all of which is under your control. Rich Colburn created Modeling Cloth Add-on in 2018, which is an interactive cloth simulation engine. Using it, you can click and drag, add wrinkles, shrink cloth around objects, mix soft body and cloth effects together, and so on. Overall, this add-on made creating cloth easier and faster inside Blender, similar to what you can do inside Marvelous Designer. 
but of course Marvelous Designer is better when it comes to doing cloth simulations. Also hopefully with the recent update to the cloth simulation system in Blender 2.82 we will be able to simulate cloth faster and with better results using Blender. Number 5. Fluid Simulation Fluid physics are used to simulate physical properties of liquids, especially water. While creating a scene in Blender, certain objects can be marked to participate in the fluid simulation. This can include, but not limited to, being a fluid or as an obstacle. For fluid simulation, you have to have a domain to define the space that the simulation takes up. In the domain settings, you will be able to define the global simulation parameters such as viscosity and gravity. Fluid simulations in Blender don't have the best reputation among 3D artists because it was not that great in the past, but with the new updates, things seem to be better compared to the previous fluid simulation system. Also, there are new add-ons in the marketplace that can do a good job, which is a great thing because this gives Blender users the freedom to use the tools that works best for them. Number 6. Motion Tracking Motion tracking is used to track the motion of objects or a camera through the constraints to apply this tracking data to 3D objects which have either been created in Blender or imported into the application. Blender's motion tracker supports a couple of very powerful tools for 2D tracking and 3D motion reconstruction, including camera tracking and object tracking, as well as some other features like the plane track for composition. Tracks can also be used to move and deform masks for rotoscoping and in the mask editor, which is available as a special mode in the movie clip editor. Blender's motion tracking tools are good enough to create professional camera tracking for your shots because at the end of the day you are using the software, but Nuke is used a lot in the industry to create award-winning visual effects because it has been used in the industry and it is the most known and professional artists use it a lot. Compositing. Compositing nodes allow you to assemble and enhance an image or a movie. Using composition nodes, you can glue two pieces of footage together and colorize the whole sequence all at once. You can enhance the colors of a single image or an entire movie clip in a static manner or in a dynamic way that changes over time. In this way, you use composition nodes to both assemble video clips together and enhance them. Blender is good when it comes to composition, but for the most part, studios use Nuke for composition because it is the industry standard and most professional artists use it to get their work done. Even Barnstorm VFX studios that are known to be using Blender, I believe still use Nuke for composition. Video Sequencer The video sequencer within Blender is a complete video editing system that allows you to combine multiple video channels and add effects to them. You can use these effects to create powerful video edits, especially when you combine it with the animation power of Blender. To use the video sequencer, you load multiple video clips and lay them end-to-end -end or, in some cases, overlay them. Finally, you can add audio and synchronize the timing of the video sequence to match it. The Blender video sequencer is good for all basic editing and it has all the basic functions Actually, the Blender video editor was not intended to be a powerful video editor such as Adobe Premiere or something like that. It was created just to complement Blender's compositor and make Blender a unique, independent, all-around open-source software. Blender as a 3D package has everything that a VFX artist or a VFX studios need to get the job done. But there are a lot of other tools and 3D software available that make good or even a better job than Blender in some aspects of VFX production. Recently, Blender is being recognized and used by a lot of artists to do visual effects. Also, it is being used to do solid work by some studios like Goodbye Kansas and Barnstorm VFX Studios, as we mentioned before, to work on some cool shows such as The Man in the High Castle and Silicon Valley. Blender has a long road ahead of it in terms of usage in the VFX industry. Right now it is making progress, but there are some milestones it needs to cross to get its share of professional work due to some reasons that we talked about in different videos, but compared to where it was before, now it is in a much better place. If you want to learn more about VFX, there are a lot of tutorials and courses online 
that show you all the basic techniques you need to know to create decent VFX. Also, there are a lot of VFX schools that teach you how to create industry quality visual effects, but it is all up to you if you want to go to school or if you want to be a self-taught artist. Because believe it or not, studios don't care too much about the way you learned to create visual effects. They only care about what you can do for them and if you can help them get things done better and faster. Also, the software is not that big of a deal, not anymore, because there is a big chance that if you find a job, the studio is not using Blender, because as we said before, it is not an industry standard. So if you created great work using Blender and you understand the basic concepts, also you are a fast and flexible learner, they will teach you their software or give you a chance to learn the software they are using which is something studios do all the time and artists manage to go through all the time as well. I hope this video gave you an idea about what Blender can do when it comes to VFX. You can tell us what you think in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.